when it comes to resource guarding, our dogs find whatever object it is that they're guarding extremely, extremely important. So the first thing we need to work on with our dogs is teaching them how to disengage from things that they don't think are as important so that they can eventually get to the point where they are able to disengage from important items. That was very general talk and had a lot of big words in there. So let me break it down. If my dog likes to guard, let's say socks, then my dog will never be able to figure out how to disengage from that sock or walk away from that sock unless they have practiced it with cups, bowls, um, shorts, towels, other things that they don't have, an, have they don't or have never guarded before. Eventually, sometimes um, the guarding behaviors can get worse and can expand from socks to underwear to now we're doing uh, guarding shorts and towels and all types of clothing. So with level one, we want to make this as easy as possible. Mufasa really, really likes to guard his bones. If he is chewing on like something like a Benna bone and another dog comes near him, he will growl and maybe even snap at the other dog. Thankfully, he has never started a fight, but with level one, I wouldn't go directly towards a bone or even a toy or even um, something that he would find of value. Like I wouldn't do a soft toy, a hard toy, any type of bone or anything like that. So today he's never had any issues with my cat, but I am using my cat carrier as the object that I'm using. So if your dog um, guards, let's say um, socks, like I was saying earlier, then you would want to use something completely opposite. So maybe something hard and uh, nothing that looks like clothes or towels or anything like that, or even blankets or soft toys. You wouldn't want to use anything close that would resemble that. So if you have a cat carrier, perfect. I have also used like a backpack. Um, I could use, um, I have dumbbells over here. I could use a dumbbell random objects just so that our dogs can learn the behavior before they need it in a high arousal situation. So in a situation where they can't focus on anything else. So we're making this extremely easy for my dogs. So that's the object we're going to use. It's called a neutral object. The next thing that's important about this level one resource guarding exercise is that we are in a location where Mufasa has never guarded a bone before. So if your dog is always guarding bones in your living room, or if they are always um, guarding socks in your bedroom, your living room, then you would want to pick a location that is different from that. So if, if the living room is where your dog guards whatever object consistently, then I would be playing this game in the, if you have a big enough bathroom, a bathroom, the backyard, um, the kitchen, dining room, maybe even your basement like I am. Um, if your dog guards outside, then play your games inside for this level one. All right. So earlier I posted a video um, called resource guarding. What is it? It'll be um, in the cards above and I'll have it posted at the end of the video as well. That game, that disengagement game, is the same thing we're gonna be playing today, but we're gonna be using an object to throw our treat towards. Think of it this way. One piece of value, one piece of food is going towards um, our neutral object. Then we're gonna do three pieces of value away from that object. So it's kind of it kind of becomes a which is more valuable so i have kibble in my in my treat pouch and that kibble is the same is it's the same value level the whole way across no piece of kibble is different from the other so what is important with the one to three ratio is that because he's getting more going away, it's more important to him. It's, it's a better deal for him to follow me away from this object than it would be to stay and potentially guard this object. Obviously, he's never guarded this cat carrier before, so that's not even going to be an issue. 
So I'm going to go ahead and grab a few treats. And then I'm going to throw one towards the cat carrier. And then I'm going to wait for him to orient back to me. I want him to look at me as his own decision. And then I'm going to feed him three coming away. So let me move this so I can get a little bit more space. And I'm going to put one right by it and then three walking away. You can also do this with like throwing kibble towards the object and then giving hot dogs coming away. You, if you did something like that, you would probably find that your dog would say, I don't care about that piece of kibble. I want that hot dog and stop even going towards the object. That is probably something we'll practice more so in later levels. Right now, we just really, really want to get the whole picture of our dog walking away from something potentially valuable. Good job, Moo Moo. And it doesn't exactly have to be one and three. Sometimes, like here, I only have two pieces of food, so I'm going to do two. Sometimes I'll have more pieces of food in my hand. I might do four. And it also doesn't have to be perfect. Just going near the object is good enough. Now, if I have a dog who gets stuck, I might use a leash to help encourage them to come back towards me, but I really, really want it to be their own decision, which is another reason why it's important to choose a location that is not very distracting. That way, your dog is more engaged with you and less engaged with the object or the environment. And you can see I'm not moving far. I'm not doing a whole bunch, like walking around a whole bunch or anything like that. I'm just taking a few small steps away. And it's just getting the picture of, hey, coming away from this thing is actually pretty, pretty nice. I'm going to do one more. Two and three. That was a small one. All right, you're free. All right, and so I would also, if you have a smartwatch or if you have a phone, Alexa, anything, any smart device, you can ask, um, ask the, or you can set up a timer. I would do probably one to two minutes and practice this exercise until that timer goes off. Once it goes off, you're done. And then you can do that once, I would say probably once to three times a day. If you do it any more than that, cool, great for you. But this is a, bit, a busy time. We all got busy lives. We all have other things we need to be doing. And doing this in such short intervals will allow our dogs to work and give 100% of themselves into this exercise. And then Mufasa is probably going to go and take a nap after this. So it's going to solidify that learning even more. If we elongate that training session, there's more likelihood that we are going to get frustrated. We are going to get tired. They are going to get fatigued and overwhelmed and maybe frustrated themselves unless learning is likely to occur. So keep it short, keep it fun, keep it simple. You guys got this. That was super fast. That was super easy. You can do this too. Pick any random object. I literally just found something in my basement that I could use and that Mufasa has never guarded before. And yeah, I just went to play in my game. All right, have a great day, guys. Keep on training.